now i will discuss the most prevalent topic not only in obstetrics and gynecology but also in medicine as a whole every medical student regardless of their chosen sub specialty must possess a comprehensive understanding of this disease anemia in general and iron deficiency anemia in particular in this segment i will delve into the primary topic of iron deficiency anemia it is important to note that there are two distinct conditions iron deficiency disease idd also known as non anemic iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia ida i will elucidate the differences between these two conditions furthermore emerging data indicate potential benefits in the treatment of non anemic iron deficiency with replacement iron therapy iron deficiency disease refers to depleted iron stores idd is defined as serum ferritin less than 12 nanograms per ml or micrograms per liter but hemoglobin is normal iron deficiency anemia refers to not only depletion of iron stores but also significant decrease in hemoglobin levels in the body that may also produce clinical features in iron depleted population 1/7 of the cases have iron deficiency anemia whereas the remaining 7/8 suffer from iron deficiency disease thus iron deficiency anemia is just tip of the iceberg consequences of iron deficiency disease are similar to that of iron deficiency anemia it must be treated more vigorously than iron deficiency anemia in this section i will primarily focus on the epidemiology of anemia during pregnancy a topic that is highly prevalent in obstetrics and gynecology how is iron deficiency anemia defined in obstetrics the world health organization who and the american congress of obstetricians and gynecologists acog define anemia during pregnancy as follows in first trimester hemoglobin less than 11 grams per deciliter which is approximately equivalent to hematocrit of less than 33% in second trimester hemoglobin less than 10.5 grams per deciliter approximate hematocrit less than 31 or 32% In third trimester, hemoglobin level 10.5 to 11 grams per deciliter, which is approximately a hematocrit of less than 33 percent. In the postpartum period, it is defined as hemoglobin of less than 10 grams per deciliter, approximately hematocrit less than 30 percent. If we were to apply this definition to Indian pregnant women, virtually every gravid woman would be labeled as anemic. Therefore the definition used in India is hemoglobin less than 10 grams per deciliter. The Indian Council of Medical Research has proposed the following grading system for iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy. Mild anemia is hemoglobin level between 8 to 10 grams per deciliter. Moderate anemia is hemoglobin level between 6.5 to 8 grams per deciliter. and hemoglobin level between 4 to 6.5 grams per deciliter is severe anemia. very severe anemia is hemoglobin level below 4 grams per deciliter which is not very rare in india now i will focus on iron deficiency anemia which is the most prevalent medical condition encountered during pregnancy it can either be a direct consequence of pregnancy or an associated condition that becomes apparent or exacerbated during pregnancy Maternal anemia accounts for a significant portion of maternal deaths comprising approximately 20% of all maternal fatalities. It is widely acknowledged that over a quarter of the global population suffers from anemia. The actual statistics are as follows. In India, up to 88% of pregnant women and 70% of non-pregnant women are affected by iron deficiency anemia. In contrast the incidence of anemia in the west is significantly lower ranging from 10 to 20%. The global average prevalence of anemia during pregnancy is approximately 51%. What does WHO global database on anemia say about prevalence of anemia in southeast asia? As seen in this chart it is a severe public health problem in all southeast asian countries except sri lanka. Bhutan has the highest incidence India is not far behind it is 74.3% 
Therefore, prevention and treatment of iron deficiency anemia is a severe public health problem in all Southeast Asian countries. Categories of public health problem are shown below. All countries are in the severe category. When studying any medical disorder complicating pregnancy, it is imperative to comprehend its impact on both the pregnant woman and her fetus, as well as how pregnancy influences the progression of the medical condition. Women afflicted with moderate to severe anemia during pregnancy are more susceptible to the following complications. Spontaneous miscarriage, preterm labor, pregnancy-induced hypertension, intrauterine growth restriction, congestive cardiac failure, and intercurrent infections. Following complications can occur in labor. Uterine inertia, congestive cardiac failure, postpartum hemorrhage, puerperal sepsis, and poor lactation in the postpartum period. Three maternal nutrients are known to be important for fetal brain development. Folate levels, adipose tissue content, that is maternal obesity status, and iron status. Maternal iron status during pregnancy and pre-pregnancy influences the developing fetal brain. First trimester iron deficiency is linked to autism. Second trimester iron deficiency is linked to schizophrenia. And third trimester deficiency is linked with neurocognitive deficits that last out up to 30 years in the offspring. Reference for the same is given below. What is the effect of pregnancy on iron deficiency anemia? Hemodilution During pregnancy, particularly in the second trimester, the plasma volume increases more significantly, that is by 40 to 50 percent, than the red blood cell mass, which increases by only 20 to 30 percent. This leads to a dilution effect known as physiological anemia or hemodilution of pregnancy. While it is not a true iron deficiency, it lowers hemoglobin concentration and can mask or coincide with underlying iron deficiency. Pregnancy places a major strain on women's iron balance. The dramatic increase in iron requirements for the fetus, placenta and expanded maternal blood volume often outstrips dietary intake and pre-existing stores, leading to a high prevalence of iron deficiency disease as well as iron deficiency anemia during gestation especially in the second and third trimesters. This is why routine screening for anemia and often prophylactic iron supplementation are standard parts of prenatal care worldwide. One of the primary reasons for the high incidence of iron deficiency anemia during pregnancy is the rapidly increasing daily iron requirement throughout the gestational period. In early pregnancy, the daily requirement is approximately 1 to 2 mg, which is sufficient for normal gastrointestinal sloughing and the early pregnancy-related increase in blood cell, that is RBC mass. However, by the second trimester, the demand increases to 4 to 5 mg per day due to the increased maternal RBC production, fetal RBC production, and fetoplacental growth. In the third trimester, the demand further rises to approximately 6 mg per day, reflecting the ongoing maternal and fetal RBC production and fetoplacental growth. Consequently, there is a significant 2-3 to three fold increase in iron requirement during pregnancy, accompanied by a 10-20% to 20 increase in folate requirement. Question: What is the total iron requirement of a pregnant woman with a singleton pregnancy from conception to delivery? Answer: A pregnant woman weighing 55 kg will require approximately 1000 mg that is 1 gram of extra iron during this gestational period. This requirement is distributed as follows. Fetus and placenta 300 to 350 mg, expansion of RBC mass around 500 mg and postpartum blood loss 180 mg. Therefore, adequate iron intake is crucial to support these changes, prevent iron deficiency anemia and ensure a healthy pregnancy outcome. At the conclusion of this section on epidemiology, I would like to reiterate the following. Iron is a valuable mineral for human body. While gold may be sought after for wealth, iron is essential for maintaining good health. 
If you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my books Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics and Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology and other books. For purchase inquiries, contact me on this WhatsApp number. I have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. You can also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook or Meta, Blogspot and Instagram. The links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.